Presley on Anything Goes. I'll no. tell you this, though. I don't really love imagining any man masturbating. Right. That's not hot to you? No. no I didn't think it would There's be. There's something. <laughs> <laughs> not you particularly. I don't think any woman really finds it. Can I ask, has, is, has Pete left the room? Or? No, he's still here. <laughs> Wait, I'm waiting for Rebecca to oh. turn around and look at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you okay. think? I'll ask, I'll ask Pete the same disturbing. question. Hey, now, Pete, if there was a guy that you once went out with... <laughs> And he came up to you and said, since we've broken up, Pete, <laughs> right. uh, there's a, a dude on the internet that I found that reminds me of you. <laughs> well, for, I'd be so confused. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Was that, did I date a guy when I was in a blackout for a while? Yeah. <laughs> now, uh... <laughs> it was just one night, but it was uh, it, like you packed a lifetime into a night. But would you be like, okay, first of all, would you, okay, Rebecca, would you want to see the girl that he thinks looks like you that's in porno? I, me, me. Uh, you would. You'd look her up. Come yeah. on. You wouldn't want to see, oh, who does this Make sure she doesn't have like a third of? eye or like it's a bad Adam. No, I have a good example to answer this question. Okay. Do you, uh, there's a British show called Survivors, and it's about a virus that kills most of the world. And yes, then there's yes. like 10 people left. Okay. And somebody, uh, the comedian Don Whitwell said, I watched the show Survivors, and there's a girl on that show that looks just like you. Right. So, and then Don will masturbate it to it? Or you? <laughs> it's possible. It is. I'm not going to speak for Don. Right. I like Don a lot. Sure. So I'd be flattered. If she um, masturbated. If she just the fact Dave does it, it's creepy. Okay. And now, let's get to a new exciting show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for some laughs? Are you? Get ready to try and shower the filth off. This is Anything Goes with Darren Frost. How the fuck am I funny? Dave Martin. What have we got here? A fucking comedian. And Kathleen McGee. And I'll execute every motherfucking last one of you. Can you dig it? We are ready. Welcome to episode uh, number three uh, well, number two officially, but we had a pilot of Anything Goes 3.0. I'm Darren Frost from Toronto. We have Dave Martin all the way from Toronto. No, did I say Toronto? Oh, you said Toronto for you, and it's Barry. Yeah. Oh. Don't, for, don't forget your punchlines. Yeah, Jesus. You, you sold yourself out of Toronto. You cashed yeah. in and left. That's right. I'm in Barry now. Uh, <laughs> Dave is in Toronto, and Kathleen is in Edmonton. And uh, before we start, I guess Dave said that... Uh, he has a little retraction to make from last week. And oh, yeah. Right? last. Oh, okay. So last week I said uh, the Dirty Debutante video series uh, was Randy West. I want to make a correction, and that was actually Ed Powers. So not Randy West, Ed Powers. Uh, Randy West did the up-and-coming series, which was the first appearance of uh, Jenna Jameson. Right. So, anyways, I, I just, <laughs> the porn historian needs to correct himself. Yeah. Well, I. I, I <laughs> I went to bed thinking uh, how many other people uh, are going to watch the show and go, hey, man, that guy really fucked up. He's wrong about that because uh, <laughs> th those things are important. So Yeah. The, the great thing is the dog did not like what you just said at all. <laughs> no, the dog was growling as you were talking. But I'm, <laughs> I'm, used, to, I'm, I'm used to growling in, in, in other forms. So it's, it's <laughs> This not, bitch doesn't like you, Dave. This bitch yeah. doesn't oh, like what you have to say. Line up. Join the club. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 30 seconds in, we're already there. All right. <laughs> so how's everybody week been this week? Uh, I walked 100 kilometers this week. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I almost lost all my toes. That was, it seemed like when I thought about doing it, it seemed like, oh, no, that doesn't sound like a lot. And right. then I started to walk and I'm like, oh, no, it's it's quite a lot. Right. And then I have too much of an ego to not, do it because I put it on social media, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So then I'm like, I have to do it, and it was it was fun though. I, but I also picked a week with three full days of rain in Edmonton, which kind of sucked. So I walked in the rain a lot. And the hundred kilometers. The, the main reason to do it was just for just mental to challenge health myself, or just to challenge yourself. Just to challenge myself. Like I wasn't right. like I wasn't trying to prove a point. I, <laughs> I just wanted to see if I could do it. Right. And then. It's kind of cool because other people joined in and tried to do it. Dave didn't. Um, like me? Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I, you. I, I never said I would accept that challenge. No, I know, I know. I, I didn't ever say you were going to. I just would be, it'd be interesting to see if you would walk anywhere. Oh, I, well, I don't, I don't <laughs> like walking. I don't support walking. I, I ride my bike everywhere. <laughs> I'm good with biking, but the idea of, I'm okay with walking as long as it's like for enjoyment, but the idea of walking for exercise, fuck that shit. No, thank you. <laughs> or walking. Well, what do you think about running though? Uh, well, that's, running away, yes. Yeah, running away. <laughs> yeah. That's what cops are for. Yeah. Uh, when I was in high school, but uh, uh, actually, I support running more than walking. Uh, I support. I, I love how 100%. you say you support. Like, it, like it's running in an election. It's walking versus running up for the presidential twenty twenty. <laughs> Well, I, I would support running over walking if that's if that's the case. Why though? Why? Because I was running, I was trying to run, but then like my knee was like just in so much pain every time I went for even just like a little run. And then when I'm walking, it's fine. Yeah, uh, I can't explain that. I don't. I'm so not, you have no you have no reason to. We're not experts. Walking that much. We're not experts. No. What the hell is your shirt? Oh my God. Did you go to Mexico and buy a <laughs> shitty market shirt? Oh my Lord. <laughs> did you, yep. did you buy that ironically or do you think it's actually funny? <laughs> uh, uh, no, actually, uh, uh, my, uh, my friend Sam, uh, who, uh, designed my website, he made a bunch of shirts and uh, <laughs> I bought one off of him because I'm trying to support more local artists. Yeah. Oh, so now I'm an asshole. <laughs> now local I'm the artist. asshole. Yeah, the local <laughs> Okay, Dave. Yeah, 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 you're, uh, you're knee high in cunt already. So yeah. I'm, 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 it's, it's, a uh, yeah, you can, you can, if you want a shirt, you can contact my friend Sam at Sam Hallam at uh, samhallam.com or you can find him on uh, Instagram as well. So, uh, and, and I like how you were pushing your chest out by doing that. I do not take the shirt off or you'll be in trouble. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. I got a really good shirt in Mexico when I was there uh, like a year ago. It says, uh, I have a, in big letters, it says, um, I'm shy. And then in little letters, it says, but I have a big dick. Oh. <laughs> and I love wearing it. <laughs> it's my favorite. I love shitty vacation shirts. I don't know if oh, you yeah, remember, well, we, we all made t-shirts, remember? that? And I just found mine, the oh, Fist the, Me, I'm or, Irish. Yes, oh, Fist right. Me, I'm Irish. <laughs> I found mine. I'm going to wear it. I don't know where mine is. Mine's probably at a value village somewhere in Toronto. Oh yeah. No, I think, I think I might've lost mine somewhere too, or value village did. Right. Um, it's always funny though, to see other people's shirts that they've made as merch show up in value villages oh, yeah. or any thrift oh, yeah. store. Some guy found one of mine and I actually felt like proud of that. Yeah. Well, I was very honored that someone didn't want the shirt anymore, so they gave it away. I threw that. it out. Yeah. I'm sure. I don't know if I've told it. Uh, obviously, I don't think I've told it on this show, but I know I told it on the old show uh, where I saw a homeless guy crawling out from behind a dumpster at around 10:30 <laughs> in the morning and doing one of those big stretches, like kind of ready to take on the day. And what shirt did he have on? That Canadian guy. <laughs> Which, wow. is te which is technically correct because I'm yeah. sure he was a, ca a Canadian guy. He didn't come yes. to Toronto just to be homeless. So, uh, did you see that Canadian guy going after Rick Bronson? Not going after, but do you uh, know what's going on in Edmonton? No, with I his club. I, it was, so it was shut down. The comic strip got shut. They were allowed to open. They were allowed to open at fifty percent capacity, and they opened at twenty five percent capacity. They had all of the equipment that you were supposed to have. They had, it was, it was well done. When I hosted there, all the mics had different heads and everyone had to have their own mic. I had to wipe down the pole every time, like some strip club bouncer. So it was fine. But then the, like the day after that, Alberta Health Services shut it down because they said that laughter is dangerous because droplets can fly if right. someone laughs really hard. Right. And uh, there's so many jokes about, oh, we'll just put shitty comics on stage. But um, so that's why they shut it down. And Rick is upset because, and he has points, like they're, all the restaurants are allowed to be open and you can laugh in a restaurant and you can watch an old hockey game at a restaurant and cheer and they're still allowed to be open. And at the comic strip, the comic is very, very far away from uh -huh. the audience. You're up on a stage and you're very far away. Um, so there's this kind of battle to reopen. 
and uh, Glenn Foster posted a whole thing about how he's like, no, I don't think it should be allowed to open. And but the reason why is because Rick has never booked me at his club. Like that's what uh, he says at the end. Uh, but he does also he does also think that it's wrong that Rick is going a little bit nuts about it. It was just a very funny post, and I'm like, well, if you want to get booked at someone's club, don't tell them that they're wrong. It just doesn't make any sense to me at all. Well, but, no, but I mean, I'll, I will give at, at least Glenn mention the fact that he hasn't been booked. I yeah. Mean, he'd probably be reading the whole comment and go, and? Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, yeah. Nobody ever says, oh, fuck this guy that has given me every opportunity in the world. Right. Except me, but I mean... <laughs> But uh, but yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I at least I'll give him that credit that he mentioned the I don't get booked there. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's still a a ridiculous thing. So, and I, well, I mean, I could see sort of they could say at at, at least at a restaurant, you, you, the only laughter is from the person that you're with, and you're just contaminating your own food. But all the people that were at the show were sitting with the people that they're social distancing with, mm -hmm. and everyone else was very far away. Like, it's very spread out. It was, yeah. everyone was like, how was it? I'm like, well, it was like a regular Tuesday night at the comic strip, 20 people. <laughs> but yeah. right. but I, I wasn't there on the weekends, but I heard it was very spaced out, and it was like, they were doing exactly what they were told to do. But I think what was the, the problem was they were giving the comic strip a, a, a good to go, and then they gave another performance space no you can't so it was very muddled what their rules were and then suddenly laughter was the enemy <laughs> as it always is right, right. and yeah so. ricky came ricky came out and, and and made some really good points on why it's not fair that his club is not allowed to be open but like sports bars are to watch tv and high five each other and laugh and and joke around and you know cheers drinks together and all that it's 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 not really fair uh, but I mean, business isn't fair in, in every province. So I'm I'm not surprised because there was so much hype about it reopening. Like he got a lot of good press and people were really excited. And mm -hmm. it's like that old thing. Don't make too much noise to, or have too much fun. The government will take it away from you. You know, it's yeah. that old thing. Are sports bars open in Edmonton? Yeah, like if you, uh, restaurants and bars are open, not nightclubs. And so I think that was like sort of a thing too, is it was kind of, they thought it was a kind of a nightclub-ish kind of thing. Right, right. I don't, like sports bars, like a Boston pizza. I don't know if pubs are open. I'm not going out. Like, have, I, you, seen, have you seen the photos of America this last weekend uh, of, uh, in the Ozarks? Of well, like the one in South Carolina. People. Yeah, well, there's also one in the Ozarks, 500 people in like a pool bar kind of thing, all like hooting and hollering and high-fiving each other. And it's just like hundreds of people, not even three feet apart from each other. It's just weird because if you look at the history and we've all seen the charts of the Spanish influenza where it shows, well, this is where we are at this point in this little tiny blip. And then a few months down the road, there's where it hits. And that's when it comes back and it, it hits hard. And that's... Right. That's why it's so selfish to be like, okay, well, I'll just kind of go out. No, I'll just go out and do this and that. And, uh, but we're all going to have to spend our entire fall inside again. It's, it's going to happen. Well, I, I tried to go for a hike with my family on Saturday and we did like nine kilometers this hike. Uh, and it, you know, it was great to be outside, but so many people did not socially distance. Like, instead of saying to me, excuse me, like I'm taking too slow, they would just like barrel right past me and almost touch my shoulder. Instead of just going, I would step to the side, a couple feet, you can walk past me. No one had time for that. You know, people walking towards you didn't walk on their side. It's like, they're just like, oh, well. so, I mean, we took one chance at seeing if it would be possible and people are just, it's not possible. Well, and it's summer. Oh, my dogs are mad. I agree, I agree with what Donnie yeah. said. <laughs> yeah, that was Eugene. That was Eugene. Oh, that was Eugene. Eugene's mad. Yeah. He they're mad because they had to go on these walks with me sometimes and it was too far for their little legs. <laughs> sure. But no, the, I we walked into there's a park in Edmonton called Horlock Park, which is it's kind of like bigger than Trinity Bellwoods. And um it wasn't as packed as those pictures that came out, but it was there were a lot of large groups and it was a lot of I think I would I think it's families but literally 30 people in a group having a picnic together. We've, I've heard that you can have, um, you can socialize with up to 50 people though in Alberta right now. Like that has been said. So there's only 15 cases in Edmonton right now. Yeah, I, I know that. Yeah. I mean, I always think it's, you have to look at everything, you know, for, in a, in, with the perspective of what's around you. I mean, 
you know, I mean, how many are there in Winnipeg? I mean, how do you have to lock down Winnipeg if there's only four cases or, you know, a hundred cases? It's like a big, yeah. big enough place. And, and you'd like to think that most people know if they have symptoms or not, but I know, I know there's the other level of if, if, if you don't show symptoms, you could be carrying it. Right? Yeah. But it's, it's like uh, HPV, you know? Well, you know, the, the, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. does Dave know that for sure? Yeah, he knows yeah. about yeah. HPV. I know. Uh, was the mayor of, is this true that the mayor of Toronto was at Trinity Bellwood? Yes. Yes. That's not only fucking was there, hilarious. He wasn't socially distancing correctly and he had the oh mask God. under his mouth. Like he was <laughs> protecting his, uh, his, his neck in case he has a hole there from smoking. You know, well, that's. Well, I mean, yeah, no, he, I mean, he was, he was there and he, yeah, of course he wasn't, I mean, he wasn't hanging out. I think he went down there to try to speak to some of the people and, yeah. and try to make a point that he shouldn't be here in the first place, but it's sort of like, yeah, I mean, yeah, and he, of course, he's taking his mask down to speak, but uh, I don't think it's, he wasn't making a, a full-blown, like, I'm not going to wear a mask just because I'm... No, no, but, but, you know, you're trying to lead by example, and th that picture, and everyone is attacking those two girls who are, and this is not my <laughs> point, but someone else said it, they were the farthest away from almost everybody else. Was, that like, you can see in them. front of them, too. Right. Yeah, but I know that girl didn't did that girl didn't wake up and to think that she was going to be the face of all this, or she wouldn't have worn that awful hat. Right, uh, <laughs> yeah. she looks ridiculous. I know. Um, well, I know there was a, there was a bit of a uh, there was a bit of a, a controversy today in the Toronto Star because they were showing they showed that one photo and that one photo got passed around everywhere. Yes. But then there was someone else that I guess had a was from an apartment building that's around the area, or they had a drone and they had a and it was flying above that took a photograph. And the photograph from above looks a lot different than the photograph of course. Yeah, angled yeah. Same thing. properly and then how, you know, it's, it, it looks like it's incredibly crowded. And they showed this with a bunch of photos of just like, you know, if you look at the, a photograph this way, it looks to people like are literally sandwiched together in a right. lineup waiting to go into a Starbucks. But then if you look at it from across the street, there's four feet between each of them. Do I Someone think did the same thing in Vancouver. Like, because there was a big kerfuffle. Uh, everyone was out on the beach one day and they, they took a like a photo from this perspective and then someone took an above photo and everybody was quite far away i don't know it just looked way more packed there it looked yeah, well, really I mean, packed were there more people than there should have been there yeah of course but i i, I don't know i mean and then did you guys see that the the video of the girl getting kissed did you no. hear about this there's a girl being interviewed by ctv and was she, she a just, dirty debutante sorry yes <laughs> I mean, powers yeah and uh <laughs> And she was being interviewed, just like, Are you, aren't you worried? Aren't you worried? And this guy just walks up and kisses her, open mouth, right on the lips. And it turns out that they had talked earlier, but, it, you know, she doesn't really know the guy. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, she literally does the whole, hey, text me. Oh, he was hot. Oh, my God, he was hot. It's the weirdest fucking thing ever. And it just reminded me of, Is imagine, the you know, Boyd Banks. You know, yeah. the Boyd Banks situation. Oh, yeah, he got in big trouble for that. Got in big trouble. And this guy's a hot dude, and she was like, oh, he's hot. Oh, hey, call me. You know, it, she literally said, text me at the end of it as he walked away. This isn't the one where the girl punches the guy in the face, is it? No, that's the parody video of it. Okay, all right. The one you're talking about. So they made a parody of the guy going up, and then she punches him in the face. That's a parody of the original video, but it actually okay. happened. It's the craziest thing. I saw the parody. I didn't see the original thing. Well, you know, fuck her in the pussy is yeah. pretty much, you know. <laughs> It's ended a lot of curse. Did you see on Twitter today that uh, the CERB was trending and I went to go look why because I'm like, oh no, is it over? And then it's a lot of like businessmen saying that it's that it should end and these people are are being encouraged to not go back to work. And it's just like, well, a lot of these people are making more money on the CERB than they would working full time. And that's gross. Yeah, what's that because say? Exactly. What is that? That's awful. Saying? Yeah. Yeah, it's saying awful shit. And then you go to this one guy's thing and he's like it's a these people are lazy it's a handout blah 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 and then his whole twitter is how he does seminars of how businesses can uh benefit from government tax cuts and benefits and i'm right. like you know what a tax benefit is a cerb for business people so maybe right. you guys should stop taking them and i think that they're really saying this because they're worried that we're gonna actually all the money is gonna go to everybody and not them right it's, right they look I, so I, I, stupid it is funny though that I mean a lot of a lot if, if people are making more money under this sort of uh, you know uh, tax uh, tax relief yeah. thing or this the CF the CRB whatever it is uh, but if, 
if, if people are making more money off that, I mean, if that's usually considered disposable income, and they're probably just going to put it back into the economy anyway. If people weren't getting these things, they wouldn't be putting money. The economy would be even, even more fucked. Right. Yeah. Because people, okay, so somebody gets their CERB and they spend it on something stupid. Well, they just ordered something from a company that you are supporting this company. Right. If we were all sitting at home with no money, our economy would collapse. Like it has to be, it, money needs to be put out there so that we can put it back. It's right. not like I mean, the government's basic, not going to get this all back. <laughs> it's basic economics. You know, they spend a dollar. You can prove that actually costs or represents $10 in the world because it gets passed on to a waitress who then goes and spends it at a grocery store, who then goes and spends it at a bar. I mean, that's how it works. Without it, yeah, the economy would be an even worse situation for sure. And this is all, yeah. and I, I agree, and this is also coming from a guy that just bought a Ric Flair hoodie. Off the <laughs> <laughs> Darren bought a Ric Flair hoodie? Huh? Not me, no. no. Oh, you did. Dave. Yes. Dave. <laughs> You're I, supporting I, local artists, though. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's going to Ric Flair, but um, uh, I think that, uh, uh, I, I don't know if Justin Trudeau had that in mind when he started giving out that two, two grand a, a month to uh, low-life comedians. But, but I, I, feel, I feel, though, that I've been paying into the unemployment insurance since I was 14 years old. Right. And I have never been allowed to collect it yeah, because of my yeah. ever. So yeah. I do not feel like I'm, I'm taking advantage. I feel like I'm getting finally back some of the money that I've put in. No, I, I've, I've, uh, I've been working since I was, uh, four, yeah, 14, 15. Yeah, 14. Yeah. And, uh, um, I, I have, I've never gone on EI. I've never taken yeah. public assistance. There's times where I could have, but, I also know that, like, I mean, there are some people that have, you know, have no problem with collecting a, a, a welfare thing at the same time. But I, I know a friend of, I know friends of mine that have gone down to, like, apply for it, like, you know, years ago. And mm -hmm. they would just sort of look around and go, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go out and try to get a job. Or yeah. I'm going to try harder to find a part-time job. It is not, um, I don't think walking out of a welfare office is something that anyone does with a lot of pride and go, Hey, look what I just yeah, did. Of course. Yeah. There are low lifes that are sort of like, yeah, look, I'm scamming the government. Yeah, I'm screwing cool. the system. Yeah. But I mean, in every, in every kind of thing, there's going to be someone that's going to try to take advantage of it. But right. most people like they're just able to continue living their normal life and they're staying at home to try and stop this. Right. Like everybody out looking for jobs is not going to stop this. No. Right. Like you, it's just crazy. I just love it. It's always rich white men that are always pissed off when other people are getting money. Speaking, <laughs> of, speaking of rich white guys, I mean, Brian Adams got into trouble last week. We didn't talk about it much last week. Yeah. I mean, Brian Adams got into trouble talking about a rich, uh, rich white guy, uh, you know, flexing his uh, vegan ideals, I guess you could say. But a lot yeah, of people. But nobody, 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 it's, it's, you know, I mean, right. I, I'm a big supporter of, I don't think that the context and, uh, intent is really spoken about much these days and and yeah they only took that one clip of him at the beginning talking about being a vegan or, or talking about the whole uh what eating rats in china and stuff like yeah. that and they didn't hold the whole vegan thing got looked over and didn't uh, well it's because it was a tweet of his instagram post and twitter cuts off at some point that just goes dot 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 right and right. most people see something but they don't go and read the dot 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 i personally I mean, it it wasn't like a good thing to say, but I think he, it was more offensive about. I think he's trying to push veganism more than anything else, yeah, but right. it did yes, come off exactly as very racist. Doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was trying I mean, to I push was... his vegan ideals on the back of a, a you know, the first half was was racist. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> Are you a Brian Adams fan? Is this hurting you? No, no, it's, no. no it's not. It's not bothering I, me at all. I was and I don't. I don't that... actually think. I don't actually think he was trying to be racist. And I'm not. I'm just speaking. That's what people saw it as. I personally oh, absolutely. didn't see it as a racist comment myself, but other people did, and that's up to them to interpret it however they want to. But I just felt he was just saying something that was in the news, quoting a few things, and then you know trying to push veganism. That's how I saw it. I, we I was, all spend more time looking at a joke than the average person. Well, I, I also was more surprised that he sold out three nights at the O2 Arena. Man, or... Ryan Adams is huge in Britain, man. Right. Really? Then, oh, fuck. In the 90s when I was living there, he like that. anything I do, I do for you and the Princess Diana connection, we're talking massive, like massive. 
And I don't think it necessarily makes you racist if you say that the virus came from China. You know, I don't think that's a racist thing to say. I mean, but lines... people will people will rake you over the coals for saying that, Dave. And I don't. I agree with you. I think it's a little bit much to be like that's racist to say it's the Chinese virus. But I'm like, well, I mean, it's where it originated. No, I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't think it's. I mean, I wouldn't bother calling it the Chinese virus. I would call no. it COVID nineteen. I would call it yeah. uh, what it is. But I mean, the Lyme disease. Lyme disease came from uh, Lyme. Hmm. Lyme yeah, so, from Lyme. No, I didn't know. Yes. I wish it did. Uh, <laughs> no, but Ly Lyme disease came from Lyme, Massachusetts, which is a, a which is the town where it actually originated from. Okay, like I those, didn't know those, that. Those ticks came from, and you know, Ebola came from the river. Uh, I believe it was the river that it was near. So it was like every virus has a or, or disease has some connection to the place where it came from. So yeah, was, and I mean. But you I know mean, what? I don't even know if I believe it started in China. I'm not a big conspiracy person, right. but I don't know 100% where it started or how it started, whether it was a bad or whether it was man-made. You know, to me, it doesn't matter. It was a man-made bad. It was a man-made bad. <laughs> but to me, I'm not, I'm not walking around blaming the Chinese. I think that's the difference. You can say it started there. That, that is the difference. But I'm yeah. not blaming, you know, the Chinese guy who's sitting beside me like, oh, these people are dying because of you. Like yeah. some people are. There are people actually doing that. And you're seeing, you know, violence and, uh, you know, horrible things said to anyone of Chinese descent or any Asian mm -hmm. descent. But, Aaron, you, know, you don't sit beside Chinese people. What are you talking about? Well, I, I, I don't know if they're Chinese, Dave. I don't ask. Yeah. <laughs> I always, and then it was a big, with the whole Trinity Bellwoods thing, it was all like, a, oh, look at all these obnoxious white people. And it's right. so funny to have all these people that are like this, oh, woke people. And first of all, we don't know what those people identify as. So True. second of all, it's just like, I, I just, I, I don't know. I always, it's, it's like, why can't we just say that this massive group of people were all idiots? Right. I mean, it's just... Because everything has to be about race and gender these days or it's not worth writing about. Right. And also, it's sort of like, I did make the point to someone that it's like these articles are written by an author, but then it's usually the editor that will write the headline. The headline, yes, absolutely. So it's just like, you know, I mean, this person who has a degree in race and gender studies... She might have wrote the article. I didn't even read the article. I just read the headline. So I mean, I, I didn't understand that headline. Like, what is she? Is she oh my God! Sorry, my dogs are freaking out. I'm a bad dog. I can't control my animals. Don't have any kids. Don't have yeah, kids. Yeah. You guys, you're ruining. You're ruining my career. Is Sorry. Michael Vick gonna? Is Michael Vick gonna show up at your headlines? <laughs>
What? And guess whose uncle he is? Frank Perry. Katy Perry? Yeah. What? So isn't that crazy that Katy Perry's uncle is Frank Perry, who directed Hello Again and um, and Mommy Dearest? Apparently she has this crazy history of classic films. Like I heard some journalist talking about like, he was like, we were having this conversation about a Frank Sinatra Jane Russell movie called Double Dynamite that I just could not imagine having with anyone over 80 or like under 80 with, but Katy Perry is like really well versed in classic film. Anyway. Wasn't she also... Sorry. Sorry. Oh no, I was going to say that movie dropped that gorgeous. I, I I saw that in the theaters when it came out. Did you? And uh, it's a fantastic movie. That oh, it's is, great. It's, it's it's to me it reminds me a lot of the Baron von Sketch show in just the sense that Baroness it's like after von the Sketch? movie. After, hmm? Baroness von Sketch, you mean? Yeah, but yeah. it's Dave, so he thinks everything's got masculine. <laughs> Oh. What did I say? Did I say Baron Von? Well, said Baron. yeah, you did. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the show that we all know that I'm talking about, uh, it's only after that show's over with, and same thing with Drop Dead Gorgeous, you, for a second you're sort of like, that whole show, uh, it, like, it, it's that when you realize, oh man, that show just showcased all women, and it's such mm -hmm. a good movie that that idea, it, you, know, it, you, you don't even think about it while you're watching it because yeah. it's that good. That's why it, I'm always sort of like, that's why I'm never thrilled with sort of like, isn't this a great show and it, it's showcasing all these different people and I'm always like, put the show and the funny part first and then you can talk about how great it is that you've given all these opportunities out. But that's oh, why, yeah, that's why it, I love Drop Dead Gordon. If it's a female ensemble piece and it was like done before 2005, I own it on digital versatile disc. I love that. So and this- Girl Interrupted, fucking, you know, Mean Girls, of course, Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion, Bride's Jawbreaker? Jo no, I don't have Jawbreaker. <gasps> I don't. And you know what? You better I get it. I don't have the craft either. But <gasps> aside from Jawbreaker oh, and the craft, yeah. You I have to complete like, your collection. I know. So, yeah, maybe I'll... <laughs> can you imagine, like, ordering DVDs? Like, they'd Do probably it. be very shippable right now. Well, anyway, whatever. But, yeah, so that's that's about it. But, yeah, Baroness Fun Sketch. Did you like Baroness Fun Sketch? Have you guys watched it? Oh, I it? did. I, I, yeah, I liked it a lot. Yeah. It was very funny. And, of course, that's why CBC uh, did not renew it. Because <laughs> they well, had a good show. I have some tea about that. Okay, please tell um, us. I love tea. It's it's very, it's all up to tax credits, apparently. And Darren, you'd probably know this. Um, shows in Canada are only eligible for like the heritage, whatever like the big tax credit is for five seasons. And then after that, they need to start making their own money. And um, CBC, I guess, got willingly fucked by Netflix because they were paying, like there wasn't, they just, they weren't able to get the money. So that's why they needed to, to end Do you it. think that yeah, Netflix that could pick it up and like start it again? It could, but why the fuck would it? You know? I don't know, and, well, we one, want more. Nothing is going to be starting up. Like, are we, that's true. are we like, are we like, Kathleen, like I have been really like, you made a post recently where you said like comedy is over and a bunch of people were like, mm -hmm, look on the bright side. And I was like, yep. finally, someone is fucking, you know, coming to their senses because I'm just like, no, this is fucking done for, a, this is done for a lot of people now. All right. And we well, and then I posted talking. that I hosted a show. And of course, some of the people that were naysayers were like, oh, but you're eating your blah, blah, blah. Now I'm like, well, it was very different sweetheart it wasn't the same it was very awkward it was very different so you there actually, isn't you did like a live stand-up show i hosted a show at the comic strip it was a regular oh, show i thought it was, that it was closed i thought that they did it got closed get, the day after <laughs> it got closed the day after so you actually did do comedy i've heard like some cl clubs in texas are open too which oh my god the house of comedy in vancouver that. is open really but they have a really great setup for this it's an old theater you you could space people out you wouldn't be anywhere near anybody and the comic is on it if you're at the back of the stage like it's a good setup for that that you can social distance the hell out of that room yeah but but it's awkward it's weird and you know how everybody says oh i'm not going to tell any covid jokes that's no. all you can think of because no. you start telling a joke from your former life and you're like oh this is about being in a bar and we don't do that anymore and yeah. Nothing seems relatable from your old act anymore. So everybody's just talking about COVID. It's so funny, but it's just, it's weird and it's different and it's not never going to be the same. Yeah. That was I, my point. Yeah, it's, I mean, anyway, okay, well, that's heartening to know that it, you know, happened. 
that it can happen. Like, because I my whole thing about comedy shows is just you know when they're like, well, they they would venues would need to operate at twenty five percent you know capacity, and people would be wearing masks, so their laughter would be muddled, like muffled. And I'm like, yeah, a venue at twenty five percent comedy or like twenty five percent with muffled laughter is not vastly different than the great majority of comedy shows. That's not going to be you know so foreign. But like, I run a mic in LA at the Lyric Hyperion on Wednesdays. And our normal load there is 35 people. Yeah. Well, that's, that's that's like that is 35 people breathing on a microphone. Like it just, that's not gonna be, you know, I don't really know how that's gonna happen. I think comics are all gonna have to have their own microphone, which is easy. You get a $50 yeah. microphone. Well, but I, you're, gonna need to, you're still gonna need to. Of course, yeah, so yeah. it's not hard to do that. But it's no, just, but it's, I mean, you're still I, touching that thing, is the yes. point. Oh, yes, 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 you're yes. right. Yeah. Yes. You know? I, do, I do remember that, like, comics would always make fun of the, of the I, I remember, like, comics would always make fun of the comedian that would bring his own mic and be just like, can you believe this guy? He actually comes with his own microphone. Mm -hmm. And I said that, like, the comedians that used to do that are like school shooters, you know, that we, we, we should have listened to them before and maybe they were right all the time. <laughs> but... Uh, it's just funny. I mean, you, you mentioned sort of Canada and its tax credits. I mean, that's why Canada has a great reputation of making like two or three great s seasons. And yeah, one, at a certain point, the more successful a show is, the more you have to start making your own money. Yeah. So that's why they sort of like, I think they gave Schitt's Creek uh, like a two se like two more seasons as an option, and then they stopped it. But I know well, that, like, I listened like, to the, I the Fuck episode with Dan Levy, and he said that, you know, he'd taken the show as far as he could. So, oh yeah, oh how brave! Oh god, he's so brave. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What's the tea there? What's the yeah. tea there? And I've been knowing her for years that I'm not a fan. Um, anyway, I just, I just like, it's just, it's just so like Emperor's New Clothes, like how, how. A, how willfully oblivious he is to the nepotism. It's just so funny. Oh, yeah. like, yes, like, yes. I, got the, I would get this on my own merit, no matter no. who my fucking last name was. And I'm like, bitch, your father <laughs> plays your father. Yeah. Like, <laughs> anyway, so whatever. Anyway, good for him. And whatever. And like, I also sort of, you know, I know about his sort of, and we all have to get there in our own way about like, you know, our internalized homophobia and whatever, but he was not a fucking, <laughs> this whole leaning into being like a, you know, a, some gay fucking visibility icon. Okay, well that's convenient because that was not the case. Anyway, like-, <laughs> like Well, anyway. I mean, you're right because when he was on MTV, it was not, he was not out. Yeah, and it was a different time. I get it. It was a different time yeah. too, but like, I just, I can remember one very specific conversation I had with him um fucking look at me not giving any fucks anymore and with COVID. It's post -COVID, would, like, who cares? keep that one under my breath but um you know it, it was a different time I, I will i will give him the benefit of that down but no I, I remember very specifically it was just like i'm ambiguous like it was like that ricky martin quote it's like you can fantasize about me however i'm just like oh queen okay <laughs> so um but whatever you know if it works for people cool um but yeah so that <laughs> That's a different I thing. I think that their partnership was Pop Life, which used to be the old TV Guide Network in the States. So I think that they had some revenue from there. Whereas Baroness was with, was with IFC, which I don't think right. was able to cut the mustard. Yes. And then, the other thing is in Canada, it's like, I had heard that they were all like, renegotiating and i'm like girl there is no money like that's what <laughs> like, that was my it's assumption like, it's like it's like here's my counter offer it's like no like your bluff is pretty easily fucking called in canada there is a real hard ceiling for the money that was there. my assumption as to why it ended was that they were like okay can we have a little bit more money and then they were like it's over well, and I, so I heard like they did get more money, but they really needed to like the writing room was like very bare bones as a result. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Anyway, but I Baroness, I liked. Um, I mean, I thought it, I thought it was you know well done, but also it just it reminded me of watching Kids in the Hall when I was like a teenager. Um, like reruns of it and the the title of it and it would show downtown Toronto and stuff and I can remember being like oh I can't I'm gonna live there someday like it was just it was really <laughs> like it really like made me like fantasize about like being an adult living in Toronto and I feel like the 
the the opening of Baroness, I really found very charming. I feel like that did it for like there are ki- there are like kids like me who watched that, and that mm-hmm. would be very aspirational. And so that's what I liked the most about Baroness. And I'm you know it's far and few fucking between that Canada is producing anything, let alone like something like that yes. to actually yeah. you I mean, know in, imbue culture like cultural artifacts. So it's so um, much cheaper that you could literally just get a host and get a whole like you know. Uh, you know, uh, 18 minutes of TikTok videos and yeah. have some guy making fun of TikTok videos and that would be a show. Or it's like, I mean, the, that whole Daniel Tosh format of like, sure. oh, here's a video. Isn't it dumb? Yeah. Uh, you know, some So show. everything is America's Funniest Home Videos now. Yeah, basically. <laughs> basically, yeah. Oh my God. Which Can you find the Bob Saget ones? Because they, I, I would love to watch the Bob Saget. Yeah, America's they're, videos they're out there. I still like... The America's Funniest Home Videos theme song is like, I think my favorite theme song. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, red, white, and blue. Yes. The one thing to do. America, America, this is you. Um, and, is, that, uh, is that really your favorite? Is that really? I think it might be. I think it might be. I, I think right now, the thing that I'm doing to kind of like not kill myself is this tournament of one hit wonders on Facebook where I'm just, yes. day, I'm putting like matchups together. Um, it's, it's funny when we were talking about, you know, Canada having so few uh, cultural artifacts. That's why I was like, I said, B44 might win this. Because oh, it's yes. like, it's something that, you know, like they did very well in their matchup against Los Lonely Boys. Are they boys. the ones that sing, if you get down on me, yes. I'll get down on you? Okay. Correct. Yeah. And they had the twisty hair. Yeah. Uh, no, they, yeah. I, they look like, they look like three androids like who were molded in the fashion of O-Town, but with like eyes of serial killers and like really intense frosted tips. They looked like Hanson on a bit of meth yeah, and MDMA. No, no <laughs> Hanson, Hanson, were, Hanson was like reed thin androgynous. No, the men of B44 were very much men. Um, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> very those, much men. Are they the ones with uh, the song uh, Liquid Dreams? That's O-Town. So B44 is, if you get down on me, I'll get down on you. Oh, yeah, I will do whatever thing you want me to. It's good to make it through, to make it through. If you get down on me, I'll get down on you tonight. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> I will be the one to rap about, about. Yeah. So um, I was like, don't be surprised for O-Town to win this entire thing, because in Canada, we have such few cultural artifacts that... Mm-hmm. Things like that are so near and dearer to us, you know. But you um, you you took it over because someone else did the '80s, right? So who won the Bryn '80s? Potty, no, Bryn Potty did the '90s. The oh. '90s winner was Mark Morrison's Return of the Mac. However, <laughs> yeah. oh yes, 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 yes. That was sort of. Uh, I think it's kind of like a fraudulent result because uh, the Verve's Bittersweet Symphony was running away with it and there were people very opposed to the Verve winning so they really campaigned to get, they really solicited votes for Mark Morrison. If it, right. but unfolded, if it was a secret ballot, it, it would have been the Verve. Really? Yeah. I think yes. that the Return of the Mac is like a, a nine, that is a 90s song. I, I'm not mad about that. It could have been much worse. But yeah. um, but yeah, no the 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 songs that squared off because it was a fatal four way, which I'm gonna do as well. Like I'm not gonna pit two and two and then two. Uh, so it was Natalie and Brulia's "Torn" from the um, from the uh, Women in Song region, Mark Morrison's "Return of the Mac" from the hip hop region, uh, the Verve's "Bittersweet Symphony" from the whiny men region, and then "T Like <laughs> Just the Heart" from the pop region, which is something that yeah. I, I that was a pet cause of mine. Was uh, <laughs> so I did solicit votes for T Light, <laughs> so they would beat Len, and um, oh and, and Len, so, oh my God, uh, yeah. So anyway, so well, I expect proven, the same thing will happen. in the I, heart is is the one for me. That's the number one for the of the four. Yeah, that represents yeah. the '90s to me. Then more oh, than yeah. any of those four songs. Oh, it was just it was uh, D Light was amazing. D Light, yeah. we didn't deserve D Light. We didn't deserve D Light. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, what was no, the band that had? What was the band that had the two guys from Young and the Restless? They were super hot, and then they had that little dorky white friend with them that was the actual good singer. It, it was two Who guys from the Young and the Restless. Fish? No, it was Nick. <laughs> it was Nick from Young and the Restless, and they had one song. What was? Oh, and they oh, had like oh, this. It was little... Jesse's girl. 
No. <laughs> oh, Rick, oh, Rick Springfield, yeah. And he's not I gotta a try. wonder. He's got, he's, don't talk to strangers and Jesse's girl, at least. Yes. You know, like an 80s one hit wonder might be a little out of my purview. You know, like we all know the, we all know the classic ones and stuff like that, but um, yeah. The we, problem, the like problem with one hit wonders for a lot of people is just because you think they're a one hit wonder doesn't mean they actually are. Well, right? everyone like various things are significant to various people right right i i have a pretty i had a pretty hard line about one hit wonders in my opinion kings of leon are a one hit wonder but okay. i was told don't even touch them people will go nuts and i mean yeah it's like white dudes you know yeah but, but even if i ever met someone if i ever met someone that like knew more than one flock of seagulls song i would be like all right we we, yeah. we we can't talk. We got. So they're, yeah, they're 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 definitively a one-hit wonder. But what right. about what about Midnight Oil? Midnight Oil. What, yeah. What is what is is that song? Beds are burning. Yeah. Yes. Is that them? Yeah, I guess yes. I guess so. But see, I I know that song, but I wouldn't know offhand like their followers. Right. Whereas with the two thousands. Uh, particularly because that was sort of like, you know, when I started doing video and trial and stuff. Of I'm very very like that right. is a very, I'm very informed on that now. That said, Finger Eleven, I completely forgot that they had to, like, I forgot Beyond Paralyzer, they also had that one thing. Mm -hmm. Here in your bedroom? What's that? Was it Here in Your Bedroom or? No, Finger Eleven had a song called Paralyzer, which was like, I'm just paralyzed by you, and if you, I don't know. And then one thing, like, if I wanted it all, and I'm it all, one thing. So they had a legit two hits. And they're from Hamilton. I don't know if you knew that. They used to be called the Rainbow yes. Butt Monkeys. Yeah, Rainbow Butt uh, Monkeys, yeah. And then oh, yeah, Jimmy, I knew that, yeah. Yeah, Jimmy Eat World was another one that, as far as I'm concerned, it was the middle, and that's it. But they yep. are very near and dear to people. People really came for me about that, so I needed to yep. take them off. Um, and then right now, actually, just this match that just concluded, uh, MIA caused quite a commotion for me calling her a one-hit wonder with paper planes because people oh anyway but so just people mean different things like d light as far as i'm concerned is a one-hit wonder i know no. all the, i have all three of their albums they yeah all, like i i know all their 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 shit like they had five dance number ones like number ones on the dance charts but you know i found I, the band oh what's that i found the band i was i was thinking about okay uh the band is called three the number three deep oh yeah <laughs> Three Deep were a soul pop music boy band composed of American actors Eddie Cibriani oh, yeah. and Joshua Morrow and Canadian singer CJ Hewer. He was like this little guy, and like, here's the song. It's coming out. I gotta turn it up. I remember Three Deep. I remember. I don't remember the song offhand though. You don't remember this song? Let me get to the chorus. You'll remember. I do it. remember three D. See, there's the little wiener guy. I don't know. Sounds like a lot of other songs. Yeah. From they were time, only big actually. in Canada. Yeah. I can't but believe isn't that, they don't. Isn't that one of the key things of making a hit song and a one hit wonder song? Because it's almost sort of like one, a lot of one hit wonders are almost like. They almost remind you of like three of your other favorite songs all yeah. in one song. Yeah, right. yeah. Like, like there's the there's ability of like oh oh that reminds me of this. And yeah, well, like, I would say generally there is a novelty. There's a quality of novelty, a uh, commercial jingly thing like that. That's the one thing that I really in the pop region of this current bracket. Uh, Baja Men's Who Let the Dogs Out is in it. And I'm like, that yep. That to me is a commercial jingle, basically. Have you, Alice that, DJ is better off alone. I'm like, that's a, com well, literally like, do you think you really want a clone? No way, like that. Anyway, so, uh, I yeah. Think that's another sign of a one hit wonder too, is like when people adopt that song. Cause I remember when that, do you really want a, a alone? Do you, the, do you think you're better off alone? Is yeah, the, and uh, that was used <laughs> in a Dell commercial. Yeah. Do you, I just sang it. Do you? Yeah, I know. I, I know. Really I just want a clone. No <laughs> way. Yes. Yeah. Do you think you really want a clone? No. Are the Vanga boy? Are the Vanga boys a one-hit no. wonder? Because no, they, they had a couple, a right? They, well, yeah. they have at least two. They have. We like to. Par we like to party would be their hit, and then yeah. boom, 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 and up and down were also. They also impacted. Uh, Aqua. Someone tried to say Aqua. Aqua no. had legit career in Canada. Yeah, yeah they had like three or. That's four the other thing that's really song. interesting is if you look at Canadian charts versus 
um, like if you look at back issues of RPM magazine to see what songs like went number one here, but barely impacted in the States. Like off the top of my head, um, Annie. <laughs> He's frozen in that. <laughs> He's frozen the way you said people would get frozen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unfreeze, unfreeze. If I could just interject here for one second. One one point I'd like to make about the Venga Boys was, uh, in actuality, they didn't really like to party. Just it's recording now. Oh shit. <laughs> Get that. Ah, uh, hi, I'm Christine Von Hagen, comic extraordinaire. You're listening to Laugh Attack. No. Shit. Hi, this is Christine Von Hagen. I'm a comic. And you're listening to Anything Goes with Darren Frost, also Kathleen and Dave, on XM Radio. Lucky you. This is why I hate Zoom, because, like, everybody is like an idiot about it. We don't know what we're doing. Yeah. But that's why we edit the show. This is why we No, I know. But I, like, Zoom (laughs) Zoom is always, like, people, like, I, I, can you hear me? There we go. There Yay! All right, can you hear us all? Yep. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Dave hasn't talked yet. Oh, I yeah, you can hear me. There we we only allow what he's spoken to. <laughs> <laughs> I like that rule. I like that. It's a good rule. <laughs> <I'm all right. laughs> just give me a second. I'm just going to tell Andrew because he's trying to jump in. Okay. Um, we're, we're done with him. Yeah. But we enjoyed having him here. It was fun. Yeah. If you remember what he was, if was he plugging something specific? No, no. He his, was just coming little, in to talk about his, that '80s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a whole okay. thing we could have talked about with like, uh, like TV she- TV themes and stuff like that. Well, then yeah. we're gonna have to have him back. No, yeah, we'll have him back. Okay. Okay. Let me just, uh, and we'll start with Bobby. Now he's sending me a message. Just give me, give me a minute, okay, guys? Hold on. Tell him we love him, but we're done with him. Yeah, Cat wants in the room. You coming in? <laughs> coming in or not? Come on. Is that your cat or yeah. dog? Uh, cat. I, only, I only got cats right now. Two cats, but he's just, as soon as you close the door, he's like, I want in that room. And then you're like, <laughs> let him in. He's like, I don't want in this room. So Because uh, cats are assholes. I know, I love it. <laughs> I, I, I still get that issue with the, the, the if you go into the bathroom and you, I've given up trying to close the bathroom door completely, and then it's, you know, and then it's just you're you're on the toilet and they just walk up and then they fall over and want to be scratched. Yeah. Right. I'm ready. Okay. So Andrew knows that we'll <laughs> come in another time, so uh, we're gonna act like we're coming from a break. All right. Because we have uh, the sponsors. <laughs> Yes, yes, exactly. All right. All right, we're back from the break. Uh, the first half with Andrew Johnson. The second half is with our friend, a uh, comedian from Toronto, originally from Thunder Bay, Ontario. Look that up on a map. Bobby <laughs> Knuff is here. Bobby. Hello. Thunder Bay. Yeah. Your, your town killed Terry Fox. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very, very proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> cancer, population control. So I don't know about everyone else's point of view on <laughs> I would is that Terry whole- Fox on your shirt? Is that Terry Fox on your hoodie? Oh no, baby, that's Nicolas Cage. Oh, Nicolas Cage. that's a good oh, one. The, the reason we I wanted to have Bobby on this week uh, was, well, obviously he's a funny guy, but mainly I don't know anyone who is a bigger fan of Nicolas Cage than <laughs> Bobby Knuff. How many bo- how many movies do you have, Bobby? By Nicolas Cage, roughly. I decided to uh, bring out the collection for you guys. Usually it's beside wow. the TV. Wow. Right here. Goes from Valley Girl all the way down to uh, Mandy down here. You don't see it keeps going, so you can't really. Doesn't, I couldn't do you have? Do you have the Nicolas Cage shower curtain? Where it's no, just his face? No, I don't go that far because. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Show some restraint. Yeah, you don't want to be creepy about it. Yeah. Well, mainly, <laughs> mainly because I have, uh, yeah, I'm losing them. I'm losing them. Mainly because my girlfriend, uh, well, first of all, we have like one of those glass showers, so that wasn't an option. Right. And my girlfriend really doesn't like Nicolas Cage. So <laughs> I, I, went out, I went out with a girl and she hated Nicolas Cage. And it Why? Was a, it's, I, I, I would ask her and it was just, but... And she just had no solid reason. She just said, oh, I don't like him. I don't like his face. 
I don't right. like what he does with his face. I just hate him. And I don't know, but I mean, but there are some people that just, for whatever reason, I think Nicolas Cage is a, like, you know what people say that, oh, there's two types of people in this world. There are people that like Nicolas Cage and there are people that don't. Oh, and, and so it's like, it's, it is a dividing line between. Oh, for sure. I think I was attracted to guys that sounded congested after Peggy Sue gets married. Cause he sounds so congested in that whole movie. Yeah. Where he's doing like a Gumby pokey type voice in like yeah, it was so it weird. Was so everyone the day he showed up to do that, they were like, "What is he doing?" And Kathleen Turner wanted him fired so many times. Was that a choice? Yeah. Oh yeah. He showed like <laughs> he showed up and he was like, "Yep, this is what I'm doing." Because he was back then always continually, but back then he would make really weird out there like choices and try to right. be like, completely just like I'm making this decision that no one would make and I'm committing. And Kathleen Turner hated it. But because it was like Francis Ford Coppola, who's his uncle, he was like, I'm, I'm going to let him do it. I'm going to see where this goes. Mm -hmm. Like, And she actually sued him. And then he, like, no, she said a bunch of stuff about him, saying, like, he was uh, really creepy and did all these things. And then he sued her and actually won because all the things she said didn't actually happen. And it's like a weird case of, like, whoa, he's whoa, whoa, wait, so wait, many wait. weird things. Like, wait, why make stuff up? Nicolas Cage sued Kathleen Turner? Yeah, for defamation, because she said a bunch of things that he didn't do on set. Like, he stole a car and drove around and did all these other things. Everyone was like, wow. no, he was weird, but he didn't do those things. So, right, she, right. yeah, he actually won that. It was crazy. I once dated a guy, um, and then I found out that his last name was Turner, and then I broke up. <laughs> I didn't want to be <laughs> Kathleen Turner one day. <laughs> That's not even an exaggeration. He was a piece of shit. He was not a good person, so it was a good breakup. But, uh, yeah, I didn't want to be Kathleen Turner one day. <laughs> so Nicholas Cage is, is in the news because, supposedly, he is going to be playing Joe Exotic in the Tiger King either movie or miniseries. Did you hear that? Yeah, that one's going to be a miniseries, I believe. Right. And it's his first ever foray into television. He's, like, never done it. This is the He's first He's never time. done any television? No. Like, other than, like, uh, late-night shows and, like, oh, right, panel right. appearances and stuff like that. He was supposed to be in an episode of Veronica Mars, but scheduling conflicts, he couldn't do it. So they have, like, a bunch of his posters in the episode and the characters staying in a house that belongs right. to Nicolas Cage. And then he was supposed to be in a community episode of scheduling conflicts, same thing. So this right. will be the first time ever doing anything. And I'm like, people have asked me, like, are you, like, disappointed, excited, or anything like that? I'm like... He makes such crazy choices. I'm excited to see if he goes and makes a Joe Exotic impression that's nothing like it. Because he's known right. for doing that, of just like what people think he's going to do. He's like, no, I'm going to do a goofy voice, or I'm going to do this to it, or I'm going to do that. And so, like, I'm excited to see that for whatever, if it, if it does come to fruition. Because it's now, crazy reading things being like, things are shut down. Who knows when it's going to start? And then this deal, this deal, this deal. Like, well, it's just funny. Go ahead, Dave. Different, there's different styles of Nicolas Cage. You know, I mean, there's the crazy Nicolas Cage, and then there's the I'm a serious actor Nicolas Cage, like Captain Corelli's Mandolin. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's a serious Killa. actor and not the one he won the Oscar for, like Leaving Las Vegas. <laughs> right. I don't, that's one movie that I've never, I, I like, when people love that movie, I really don't get it. I know that's one movie. I've never seen that movie. Leaving Las Vegas? Yeah, I've never seen I should watch it tonight, probably. It's super depressing, but it's really good. It's the one he won the Oscar for. But it's not like one I go back when I'm like, ooh, time for some cage. Like, let's watch <laughs> Depressing Alcohol. If anything, it was one of the movies that helped me be like, oh, I have a problem. I'm going <laughs> to... Yeah. What, yeah, what's the most cool. underrated Nicolas Cage movie that, like, everyone should underrated? see because it is actually good? It's, oh, I know what it is. It's Pay the Ghost. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, dramatic scene ice, cream. ice cream, yeah. What? Well, What's it about? Oh, it's, it's not a, I'm in the movie, Kathleen, in my scene. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're such an idiot. Eugene <laughs> wants to say hello. Um, oh, hello. But what is the most underrated one, in your opinion, Bobby? Yeah. I mean, yeah. not a, a star in it. Uh, so an old one that, like, no one's even heard of. Because I'm not going to say A Vampire's Kiss or something like that. Because That's my favorite. That. But That's everyone's heard of it, even though it's an underground one. Maybe not everyone's right. seen it, but they know. They've seen clips on YouTube, all that stuff. But Kiss of Death is probably, like, one of the older ones that no one's even heard of. Him, Samuel Jackson, David Caruso, Helen Hunt. 
Uh, that's that's not that underground. I knew about that because it was saw, David Caruso. I remember that. I saw What's that. What's it like, about? Uh, he's so it's about like this like David Caruso's this guy who gets caught by the cops doing like some mm. like Grand Theft Auto type stuff, and he has to go in wearing a wire to bring down Little Junior, who's Nicolas Cage, and he makes some of the craziest choices in it, and it but it, they all work because the movie's kind of like an old film noir. It is like a remake from like the twenties. Like, Can I we talk about David Crusoe for a second? Because do you know the movie Jade? Yes. Yeah. With the I used to like yeah. secretly rent that movie yes. and watch it because there was so much like weird sex in it. Like he like somebody gets fucked in the butt with a shoe, and I remember I was like fourteen or thirteen nights. I was like, oh my god, this is crazy! But That's I gotta watch it again. That. What's, what's <laughs> about that? It's in the ass. I, I will never forget that someone got fucked with a stiletto up their butt. I was like, "What? Oh. This happens?" <laughs> Not like a Chuck Taylor shoe or anything like that. No, no it was a high heel stiletto. stiletto. <laughs> but then were you disappointed in life when you didn't come into contact with it as much as you thought you were going to because this movie made you believe, like, "Oh, okay, that's the next." The one thing. time I bring a stiletto out and put it up some guy's ass, he gets mad at me. So I guess I mean, he wasn't a fan of Jade. Let, let me tell you. <laughs> Something. The day that someone does that to me, uh, loonies and toonies will come out the end of my cock. That's what will happen. <laughs> that will be my stripper closing move. <laughs> now, how, now, Bobby, how do you think? Because, like I said, there's like different versions of Nicolas Cage when he when he chooses to do. It's like Vampire's Kiss is like that's like crazy Nicolas Cage, but it's a comedic one. And then there's um and also uh, uh was it uh what's the what's the um uh the heart heart um it's the wild, wild at heart wild at heart oh, oh yeah yeah of course yeah i mean classic. that's also another that's another crazy nicholas cage but it's a little bit yeah. more serious than and then there's snake eyes which but david but wild at heart that's david lynch so like everyone's expected to go in these crazy directions in his right. movies because they're not based in like a reality type situation they're based in like almost over the top performance and story and situations and then like so he was like kind of a perfect fit for that world because like Vampire's Kiss and stuff like that, he was doing that. But then he can play it really toned down. Like one of my favorites is The Weatherman, where it's just I like, love The Weatherman. Yeah, toned down cage, but it's perfect. And he knows how to play all those angles. And like you buy him as this sad sack who just thinks he's going to get things going again, but it's never going to work out. But you're like, come on, cage. <laughs> like, well, I, do you think he'll have a comeback or do you think it, it, he's better the way he is right now? The thing is, he's never needed one because he hasn't ever gone away. Like, he's but, gone but, He's gone to the top, but no one can stay at the top. Of course. Of but course. you could ask a person in their 20s right now about Nicolas Cage, and they might not know who he is. But you'd be surprised because he started <laughs> popping up in these, like, underground horror movies that people, like, really love and flock to. So he has this whole new fan base just from the movie Mandy. And, like, people... We're going to it expecting Crazy Cage, which they get, but then he got this huge fan base because they're like, oh my God, this guy actually, we thought he was kind of washed up. What's it called? Not. Sorry, what's Mandy. it called? Man? I've heard about Mandy. I've heard about it. What's it about? It, has, it probably has nothing to do with the uh, Barry Manilow song. song. Yeah. No, no, no. It's like a crazy acid trip of a movie. Uh, Elijah Wood actually produced it because the two of them met on the movie The Trust. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> they met on this and then like Elijah Wood has been produced he has his own production company now he produces horror movies and only stars in a bit of them and then he produced Mandy and then The Color Out of Space which was another crazy horror movie which was H.P. Lovecraft so yeah, that, heard that one getting these huge like horror fans again and then also throughout the 2000s that was kind of his comeback with like Adaptation uh, Matchstick Man Lord of War Weatherman like he got his second Oscar nom with adaptation, which I thought was crazy that he lost. I don't who he lost to? Who did was he lose the to? butterfly effect, or was that Ashton Kutcher? That's Ashton Kutcher, which was a okay. Movie. It is a good movie. Like yeah, that, movie. called Next, where it goes really back in time for like he can go back in time for like five minutes. It's one of the not. <laughs> What's the romantic one like that? I think it's called Rachel McAdams. I remember she like has a miscarriage in it and they go back in time and stop the miscarriage oh that's uh, the sad sure back to the future remake <laughs> <laughs> is it called about time about time i, I feel like 
I've seen, there's a few of those time travel one. Keanu Reeves is always yeah. the big one. The Lakers. Yeah, that, the movie next, is it, can he go back five minutes or? Yeah, it's like, okay. or even, it's, or it's like three minutes or yeah. five minutes. It's really short and he uses it to be a magician and then he gets like taken in by the government, like Julianne Moore and stuff. He's like, but if, if I could do that five minute thing, I would do my showcase sets over and over and over. <laughs> I would be like, oh fuck, that didn't go well. Let me go, let me do a whole new set. And no one would know, and I would just be bang, bang, bang. I would literally, <laughs> nobody would know, so I could keep people there for hours and just keep doing the same set over and over <laughs> until I don't I, think I, I, I don't think I'd have kids. <laughs> <laughs> You'd go back in time and stop that. You'd go back in time and make a miscarriage. <laughs> but how do you even know with only five minutes? You don't have that intelligence, Darren. <laughs> your son listens to this. Darren, I know that's why I said and now that. He, now he's like. My dad wanted me to be a miscarriage. <laughs> that's why. That's why I said that. Well, I think your son is smart and handsome and intelligent because he sure. said I don't look middle aged. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, me wait, and Dave look like middle aged. Dude. My beard. I'm gonna drop twenty years, and then your son yeah. can shut up. He's gonna watch this one. He's like, who's the young guy in the corner? The, the young guy with the Nicolas Cage stuff. Who's that guy? Oh, oh that's Bobby. <laughs> Bobby. Okay. So I, let me finally get this question out. What version of Nicolas Cage do you want to play? Joe Exotic, because Joe Exotic is already a little crazy, and you can That's take over the, the top, and you could be at more or uh, or 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 what or we tore tone. If he was smart, let me before you answer. If he was smart, in my opinion, he would play it less crazy because it's a mini series. Because everyone's going to expect him to go crazy. Yeah. This is why I'm like excited because it's the first challenge where he's playing someone where people actually know the person he's playing. right. Because right. the other time he played a real life guy, which was in Army of One, which is awesome. <laughs> this is the best. <laughs> this one's great because it's based on a true story where this guy got a vision from God to go kill Osama bin Laden. And it's just this a regular American guy who keeps sneaking in and trying to do it. And it was all true, but the guy, no one actually knew the guy. So he could right. do whatever he wanted with the performance and no one's going to compare it or anything like that. So this mm -hmm. is the first time where everyone knows so much about Joe Exotic of from course. that mini series. So Darren, I think exactly that. That's what I want to see is like a couple of those scenes of him shooting the guns and like sure. mask and all that. But then like him taking a really inflective like adaptation type. Right. Like where he plays both those roles in that movie, a really outgoing guy and then a guy who's like this all the time. So I want to see him do that with Joe Exotic. Like him luring those guys in with like his promises and cats and stuff like that. It's gonna be so much creepier than people think, I hope, right. if they do it. It'll be nice when it comes out, but at this point, any comic that is still doing Tiger King or whatever that show is called, if they're still doing those jokes, I've lost all respect for them. Oh yeah. <laughs> those yeah. jokes are so eight months ago. <laughs> and the, the thing with that, you can't even make jokes of it. It itself is its own thing. Yeah. That any right. jokes people were making were so, oh yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Like, they weren't funnier than anything that was just... Like, those music videos in Joe Exotic are better than anything anyone's ever going to... Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, like, it's, the old, it's the old thing, right? Uh, truth is stranger than fiction, right? We're never going to say anything funnier than that music video or something that happened in that show. So what's the point? And you, and you, you know what, what, what's, what's amazing about those music videos is it almost makes them better when you realize he didn't sing them, he didn't oh, write those songs, yes, but he yes. didn't play the music. It's almost a, it's an extension of his character, yes. even more phonier, but you still sort of love him for it because at the end of the day, it, it's all directed towards, you know, Carol fucking Baskin. <laughs> now, what, right. uh, there was a video, that, there was a trailer that I remember I sent to you, Bobby, uh, where he, where uh, Nicolas Cage was like a wild game hunter and uh, oh i know i haven't seen this one yet primal <laughs> on the boat and then I'm the so tires get loose on the boat I don't, I don't i haven't seen it either i want to just because it's just it's just such an obnoxious premise and nicholas cage is like that ridiculous guy is it, that you kind of want is to it like snakes on a plane but it's got tigers on a boat is that what it's it is basically well, tigers he's on like a boat. this like uh, exotic animal I've, i haven't seen it yet but i've read obviously i'm like excited for anything he's like an exotic <laughs> animal dealer so he goes and like gets these and then just like deals them either to like drug dealers or Hollywood right. or whatever. Or Mike Tyson. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So he's on this boat and then it like, they get loose. And so it's just like all these animals kind of on this boat. Wow. 
And like one of them is like the thing he's been getting is like a Oh wait, 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 wait. And does like Eddie Murphy pop up like Dr. <laughs> Doolittle and talk to the animals? And then Robert Downey, Robert Downey Jr. Jr. pops Jr. up and tries to talk to the animals, but Eddie's better at it. So we, Robert goes down first. Oh man, we could write this movie. <laughs> I would love to see that. Oh, yeah, fucking lions on a boat. <laughs> Where all the do all the Doctor Doolittles from all the years yes. keep showing up and going like, "Hey, I'll, I'll let me try." Yeah. So. Okay, we don't have a lot of time left, but I do uh, want to talk about you released an album, Bobby. So talk a little yes. bit about that. Uh, I released my first ever album because I've been doing stand-up now like over a decade. I realized the other day I'm like, because I'm in my early 30s, started at 19. Anyway, first ever album, and I called it Rock Bottom. Uh, and I released it on the day I hit a year and 11 months sober. Right. Uh, because it like kind of- You couldn't have waited up. another month? What? I was, I was going to, but then I was like, I was going to put it out the month before, do other things. And then it's also just me being like, ah, crap, I want to hit a date. And right. so I put it out on that because there's a bunch of jokes about it being of my sobriety and everything. Because it's a mix of like jokes I wrote when I was still drinking and then right. jokes within the year and a, and a bit that being sober. And so, like, and which jokes are more mature? Yes, they, they are better. They are much better. And uh, the cover of it is like me half out naked at this camping yearly camping trip I do with all my buddies. But they're all clothed and sitting around like nothing's happening because that's how I used to be. And so, like, I released that on Wednesday, and a bunch of old friends and some family members find it awkward because I have that mom joke on there that uh, right. you know, dare. Yeah, of course. So yeah, it's been a Great lot of joke, fun. Yeah. What uh, no uh, no when you. Uh, like that, you never took a break from stand up while you were trying to get sober. Oh no! Right, so it's sort of like so. Were were there moments where you decided I'm not going to drink anymore, but you still had a collection of of drinking jokes, and and you still tried to do them? Because there are moments, and I've seen comics that'll go. That I don't even think that they realize anymore, but they'll go back and forth, like or they'll mention the beginning of their show that they've been sober. And then they'll sort of start doing drinking material. Right. And then you're sort of like, well, what about the part? You know, it's like that old guy that does sort of like jokes about his wife. And then he talks about, oh, I banged this chick the other night. Yeah. And sort of like, well, what, what's going on here? Well, that yeah, was they're the my favorite. Hour. That's so my favorite cool. kind of comic. Yeah. Well, um, that was the biggest thing for me was like going back and then like writing new jokes about being sober. But then some of the jokes were exactly that. Where was that? So finding the way to rewrite them so I didn't have to lose them. Right. But it was like coming from a different point of view. And some jokes I actually got to get a whole other half out of them because now I was looking at like, oh, I thought that that's so I've written more material from it being so. so OK, you know. but my, my one question is, have you sent the disc to Nicolas Cage's people? <laughs> no, because it has nothing to do with Nick Cage. So I don't. So he'd probably love it. He probably yeah. like this is so creative and weird and awesome and I want to hear it. Do you know the crazy part? That script, I think I've even like chewed your ear off in a car ride, Darren, about yeah. it. Of like, then they're making that movie kind of. Right. Like, he signed on to do, it's like, it's called The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. And it's like, he plays a version of himself. Yes. And in this, yes. he goes to this drug dealer's birthday party and all this. And I was like, this is like the script I was writing, but mine's better because I kidnapped Nicolas Cage, <laughs> force him to read my script. And then he tells me it's a piece of shit. And even though he's done things that aren't that great, so I keep him locked up until he agrees to do it. And then I find out the face-off technology and I swap faces with him and right. make my career go through the roof. So mine was way better. So. Right. <laughs> but I should send him this album with, uh, maybe send him this video. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. You should definitely, why not? What do you got to lose? Send him exactly. a, send his fan club a link or something. That's what I would do. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Because you've met him, right? You have, you have actually met Nicolas Cage, right? No, I haven't physically like met him, hello kind of thing, but I've been in three separate screenings at TIFF where he's- You've watched him sleep though, right? <laughs> <laughs> then this to we, him. You didn't meet, but you did watch him. <laughs> you didn't meet. Uh, <laughs> you so sat in the theater with him, like oh, two rows apart watching like his movies at TIFF and then saw him do Q&A. So I have like those videos on my phone and everything. Did right. you watch him watch his movie? I would totally yeah. do that. It was great. Yeah. I kept like, ooh, this is, and like hearing him laugh. I Bobby was, was hard. <laughs> wow. 
my girlfriend <laughs> hates and love that this is happening so i can get all this out because she's yeah. finally been like during quarantine like fine we can watch some so i'm like oh, where do we start so <laughs> like so many different like oh let's do action cage let's do subtle let's do cop gone bad let's do cop gone criminal gone good like, now, have you did you ever see the uh was it bad parents that Nicolas Cage one? There was one oh. that came out a little while ago that was like a straight to DVD. Mom and Dad? Yes, that's the one, that's the one. Well, it was it straight to DVD? I saw this maybe at TIFF. This was awesome. Well, I, I, I saw uh, Kiss of Death in the theaters as well. So uh, lots of- um, Oh, that's amazing. I'm lucky yeah. enough to see a bunch of old ones in theaters because in Toronto they, have, they play things at TIFF, at the Royal, right. and things. So I've seen movies that I like, that weren't available when I was younger, like on the big screen, like I went to, so disappointed this un this cage fest that was happening it got it stopped halfway because of covid so i only got to see red rock west and peggy sue got married in theaters and miss boy in blue and zandalee oh man the virus blue, hanlon's in toronto kathleen did you know this hanlon's point the nude beach. oh yeah well that's the nude beach we went to yeah he plays that guy who the beach is named after in really this movie ned hanlon <laughs> Yeah. Ned Hamlin. His name is <laughs> Ned Hamlin? Ned, Ned Hamlin. He's a Ned famous Hamlin, rower. Yeah. And I finally realized I was watching this. I'm like, Hamlin, Hamlin, where do I know that name? And I'm like, Hamlin's point. I looked it up. I'm like, holy crap. The That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. I've, I've seen Bobby's dick in a non sexual way. We were just relaxing <laughs> at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite days. I still think that, that was a good day. That was so much fun. So many different yeah. people. Oh, that was amazing. I probably okay. talked about Andrew Jackson was, was, was there. Yes. Our previous was. guest. He was there. Yep. Oh, okay, so. we've got to wrap it up, unfortunately. But what we'll do, Bobby, is uh, we will bring you back because I want to also have a, a little discussion about your other fandom with Weird Al Yankovic. So we'll do another <laughs> episode about Weird Al because I've got a story about Weird Al. You guys probably do as well. So we'll have Bobby back. Uh, thanks, Bobby. Appreciate it. And where can people get the album? Here's your chance. Rock Bottom is available anywhere you can get your music. Apple, Apple Music, iTunes, you can buy it. You can stream it on Spotify, Google, pretty much everywhere. Sorry about my dogs. <laughs> okay. No, not at all. I got to do a Michael Vick joke. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody walked by the apartment and it was a uh, World War Three. Oh. <laughs> but we're uh, moving and we're going to have a backyard. So. Yeah, I saw we'll that. Be able to throw them in the backyard. How did, Kathleen, I always want to ask you, does it ever bother you when people recognize you more for your dogs? It's like if, if, if you're out somewhere and someone says, oh, hi there. Hi there, Eugene. Hi there, Dottie. But they don't know your name. Does that <laughs> no, they, that's never happened. <laughs> it ha oh, really? it ha people, people know me and then they know my dogs. Like they'll be like, Kathleen, well, where's Eugene and where's Dottie? Or I've been to the dog park and people are like, Kathleen and Eugene. Nobody's what? ever been like. Yeah. No, because I mean, my I have uh, neighbors upstairs from me, and and their oh, and they know balcony, your cats. Well, their balcony is like that, and, and mine's like down here, like this. So my cats will stare at their dog when it's out <laughs> on the balcony, and they'll sort of <laughs> yell at their dog, and the dog will look at the back at them. So I know that their dog is named Maple, but I don't know what the I don't know what their names are. Like, well, that's normal. Yeah. That's normal. Like if you go to the dog park, I know everybody's dog's name, but I would I don't know any of the human names. I've also sort of wondered about it, like when really hot women get a dog and then all of a sudden the <laughs> attention is all drawn to the dog. Is there any more? Are you calling me hot? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you. And then, wow. I am warm. Let's just say hot hot women in general. But like you okay. can tell that <laughs> Thanks, Dave. That, Thanks for retracting that statement. Yeah. Yeah. Do not retract it. Yeah. No point that I retract anything. I'm just saying. <laughs> I hope we're still recording. Yeah, we're still yeah. recording. It's all, it's all, it's all recorded. But I, I'm yeah, not, I bet I, you that would. If you were like some hot influencer, but you're you had a dog and their Instagram blew up too, and someone was like, "Oh, Puddles the Poodle," and they didn't know you, that would probably irk somebody. Oh, I sure. wouldn't care. Especially but if Puddles the Poodle had more Instagram followers than exactly, they had, right? And people get mad money. when they find out that Eugene has like. I, he's almost at a thousand and they're like your dog has more followers than me i'm like yeah. well my dog's more interesting than you i guess yeah. <laughs> i don't I look know. at oh, there's there's a kid who all he does is open presents that's all he does and he has I've seen millions of followers and he makes millions of dollars yeah and if you would have told me 
20, 30 years ago that we'd have TV channels just based on food and we'd have kids making money yeah. just by playing video games and recording themselves playing video games or opening presents. And you, I would not have dedicated 30 years to some bumfuck town week after week. I would have been on something else, I think. I, have to, I, bet I, I really hope that there is a town called bumfuck. I hope they yes. have a good sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> they better. <laughs> that's me. I, that's where I live. I saw this one thing where it was like this. I hate YouTube families so much. They're so annoying. Like mm. I saw this one where they had like a little girl and she was, she was like probably four or five. And they're like, if you can spell the toy, we'll buy it for you. And they would pick a letter from the alphabet and give it to her. And one of the letters that she picked was I. So she wrote down iPod or no iPad mm. and they wouldn't bought her an iPad. And I guarantee you they coached her before that. Like, wow. These family, they're so obnoxious and, and I'm really, I don't, I'm, I thought TikTok was fun for a while, but now I'm just on there. I'm like, these people think they're literally famous for lip syncing other people's work. And it's very frustrating. <laughs> all, all, of, <laughs> like, all of a sudden Dave wants a kid, you know, daddy no. gets yeah. whatever you can spell. W-H-O-R. Daddy gets, you fill in the last letter. Daddy gets a whore. Yeah. <laughs> Spell Coke, C O K E. <laughs> Daddy gets Coke. <laughs> it's the Daddy's weekend. Daddy's got to make a phone call. <laughs> Daddy's got to hang outside a guy's house for a couple of little while. Uh, <laughs> well, that's the thing. Oh, like, how God. are people getting? Like, you know, obviously, I've said thousands of times, I don't do any drugs. How do people get their drugs now? How do people get their drugs now? They have drug dealers yeah, that drug dealers. still have phones. But how do you social distance and make a transaction? Oh, you think drug dealers are really worried about social distancing? <laughs> yeah, I'm well, sure they're they got really got. I'm, I'm sure they got Lysol wipes all over their baggies. Sure. <laughs> they got you just have to hope that they have a window and they can stick their head at head and or hand outside <laughs> of it and throw it down at you. I well, I can tell you. I have that experience from. Oh shit! My coke dealer's got Interact. This is amazing. <laughs> you know what's weird is that, that now you can transfer funds, and everybody has an email address, and everybody has a bank account. Yes. There's no reason or excuse anymore to be like, "Oh, hey man, I don't have it. I don't have any money." Yeah. Like, I know. No. You think that cash is? I personally think that cash is dead. Like, I think that after this, we're gonna start seeing. Because why do we need cash? Well, there's always going to be an underground economy and there's always going to be a black market. And that's where well, then use Bitcoins or figure something else out. But I just think that cash is just like, because it's so easy to spread. You, like money is freaking dirty. It's all over pussies in, in Alberta, just so you know. Oh, Moonies man. and toonies Dave, covered in, <laughs> Moonies and toonies there. covered in Alberta pussy juice. <laughs> <laughs> Go lick a toonie, Dave. Oh, Get a taste of Alberta. Dave. No, first time, I, first time I ever heard of the of the toonies, the heated up toonies. Yeah, isn't that awful? Oh, yeah. I did not approve of that. No. I don't well, even... that's a disgusting human. The Looney and Toonie game can be fun. It can be a, a good time for everyone. But yeah, if you were going to heat up the Looney's, that's pretty rude. Well, but I've, you know, I've won prizes at the Looney and Toonie game before. What is the Looney and Toonie game? Oh, you don't? I thought that's what you were talking about. No, I was talking about when they throw the, the Looney's and Toonie's at the strippers. Yeah. Yeah, that's the Looney and Toonie game. Yeah. Like, I I don't know if they do it anywhere but Alberta. I've never seen anywhere but Alberta. I don't, so I just, what happens? I don't, I don't consider it a game. Well, it is a game though. <laughs> it, it maybe if you thought of it that way, you'd be better at it. But yeah. it's a game. Like, and sometimes they'll have like their posters. Like, their this is their how girls sell their merch. Okay, right. so they'll have like a poster mm -hmm. and they'll make it a cone and they'll put it between their legs. And if you throw a Looney or Toonie into it, you get the poster. Some right. of the girls have these laminated keychains of a naked picture of themselves and they lick it and stick it. And then if you flick it off, you get to keep it. There's so wow. many fun. I mean, I, I feel like strippers, like they're just trying to have fun and they're just trying to make sure we're happy. Well, I just, I mean, that, 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 Amen. Was, that was the Amen. third group of people that I was worried about were the strippers when they come yeah. back and how are they going to Social make distancing. It. That lap dance is tough. Yeah. Did they open? Did strip clubs open? No, no. I thought I heard number five orange opened again, but I don't know. That could be a false. No, I don't. I, I never like the idea of the throwing the loonies or toonies at the strippers, and I don't even support when they have a porno movie playing in the strip club. Oh yeah. Which I've been to some places where I'm sort of like, come on, this is ridiculous. It's. I mean, that does real, make sense. They're not going to play a stand-up special. Stage. 
Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to play a stand-up special while someone's on stage at Yuck Yuck. So that is no, but a good have, point. Well, no, but they have sports on, and that's fine. But I mean, yeah. when they have a porno in a strip club, I'm like, that's a real person up there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you're about. really worried that's what about you're worried the about dignity game. of yeah. the stripper. I do. I stand yeah. up and I go, how dare, what are we, animals here? I don't know if Last I Last time I was. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I don't know if I ever told the story. I was at Fillmore's once for a friend, but not really much of a friend anymore, but it was a, a stag party, and it was the night Princess Diana died. And so in Fillmore's, they had the giant screen. Normally, they play pornos, but that night, they were actually showing CNN footage of the crash site, and all these strippers were crying and <laughs> around, and they would come up to us and go, isn't it sad? She was a princess. Oh, my God. Does anybody want to dance like this? You know? And yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's what I want. The real emotional stripper. That's what it's I need. So sad. Last yeah. time I was in Toronto, I went to Fillmore's. It was uh, Adrian Fish's birthday, who is somebody that we should have on. She's yeah, a lot sure. of fun. Yeah. Uh, Adrian Fish, it was her birthday. And uh, she was there with her girlfriend and all of her lesbian friends. And they all had like a room upstairs that they'd rented out. And uh, when I got there, she's like, come have a lap dance with me and the stripper. And I was like, okay. And the whole time I was worried that the stripper was going to put her bare vagina on my clean jeans. Right. <laughs> That's what I'd be like, don't sit, please don't sit. Yeah. Just hover, just hover. It's like just a hover. Yeah. Just hover. I'm not into it. But no, it was, Fillmore's was very fun and uh, very expensive to drink there. Because I remember oh. I got like one really? double and it was $25. But I was like, for girls? Because oh. in Alberta, well, but in Alberta, people. girls don't pay a lot for booze at the strip club. Girls don't pay cover to go in. Like they want more women to be there, so mm -hmm. it looks a little bit more natural. legitimate, I guess. I don't know. Natural, natural. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're going for. Yeah, natural. Yeah. Oh my lord! They had a popsicle sucking contest at one place too that I went to. Of course they did. And what did you do with your, what did you do with your trophy? <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, it's on my mantle, right? Oh, <laughs> I, yes. I deep throated it and I swallowed it by accident. <laughs> and, and, did, and did the guys enter a taco eating contest? Is that how it was like a? That would have been really messy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's I a was cowl song. A, I find it weird when strip clubs serve food. I've <laughs> never ever eaten anything in a strip club ever. There Did used you? to be. When I was in high school, there was a uh, strip club in Edmonton called Crazy Horse, and they yep. had a, a noon lunch buffet, and okay. they had strippers at the time, and, like, all the guys would go at lunch, like, the ones that had could go in would go and have uh, the, the stripper buffet. Oh, no, I, 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 there was a house in Lancaster on the Queensway, and a couple of times when I was working on set with my friend Tim, who was in the, in the uh, transport department, that we would... We would go and have the, uh, <laughs> the free buffet at the House of Lancaster. <laughs> and uh, it, I, it wasn't good, but it wasn't as terrible as it could be. But it, right. it was very odd. Like, what, it is was, it, what is it? What do they serve? Like tacos and hot dogs? What? <laughs> Wings. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, uh, they had like, well, I mean, I think any, I was about to say you could fuck any food. So it was like lasagna. Um, you could fuck lasagna? What? Well, I guess you could. I couldn't. I guess Dave has. You could, sizz you could scissor with it. You could <laughs> I could scissor with lasagna. Yeah. Okay, you ready, guys? On that note, get...